Australian forests. Complex, mysterious, deadly. The tangled branches and gloomy undergrowth provide perfect hideouts. Shadows in which to lie in wait. Secret lairs from which to launch a lethal ambush. A predator's paradise. These are the case files of Australia's notorious forest killers. Lurking beneath the canopy are predators that conceal weapons, hunt in gangs and lay deadly traps. Even the plant life should be considered armed and dangerous. Topping the list is a killer that is renowned for throttling its victims. The Amethystine Python. Meet Australia's biggest snake. It can grow to more than 20 feet long. The Amethystine Python, locally known as the Daintree Strangler. As much at home on the ground as he is in the trees, this magnificent male has a ravenous appetite. He could devour an adult wallaby. He hunts in the pitch dark of the forest night. But he doesn't need night vision. Heat sensitive pits in his jaws can detect warm blooded prey. There's nowhere to hide. As he prowls, his tongue flicks in and out, tasting the air, relaying chemical messages to his brain via a special receptor in the roof of his mouth, known as the Jacobson's organ. He smells a rat. A plump, juicy rat. While remaining perfectly still might save the rat from a predator that's reliant on eyesight, there's no escaping the acute senses of this killer. This snake's bite contains no venom. He doesn't need it. His powerful jaws and long backward angled teeth grip the rat while he slides his deadly coils around the prey. Powerful muscles constrict, crushing, suffocating, squeezing the life out of his victim. To swallow something this big needs an unusual approach. His jaws are held in place with elastic tendons, which can stretch wide enough to accommodate amazingly large prey. The rat is swallowed whole, head first, fur and all. A tasty morsel and enough to keep this Daintree Strangler satisfied for several weeks. While the Amethystine Python uses brute force to throttle its victims, 
other forest assassins use more intoxicating methods to subdue prey. Australian forests harbour creepy crawlies that wield potent chemical weapons and should be approached with caution. These beautiful golden threads, catching the sun, glistening in the light, have been built by a spider. The golden orb weaver spider, named after its remarkable gilded web. Attractive in appearance and sinister by design. Bees and other insects are attracted to the bright threads. A deadly trap constructed by the spider to lure and ensnare her prey. Measuring three feet across, her web is huge. A complex structure created by a master weaver. This is precision engineering, an intricate web of deceit. With a leg span of up to four inches, the inward pointing limbs of the golden orb weaver are specialized for weaving. Strong, flexible and light, the silk she spins is considered a wonder of the natural world. The web is so strong, it can stop large flying insects and even small birds. Now all she has to do is wait. In the dangerous underworld of the forest floor below, a community lives out its own drama. This is a katydid, a relative of grasshoppers. It lives among the leaf litter, feeding on the fallen leaves and seeds that cover the ground. Wherever it feeds, the shadows hide danger. Like this giant centipede. The katydid looks remarkably like a leaf, a clever deception that allows it to blend in with its surroundings. But it can't fool the deadly predator that has it locked in its sights. A nocturnal hunter, the giant centipede measures nearly 10 inches long. Its eyes can only just make out light and shade, but it doesn't rely on vision. With sensitive antennae, it tracks the chemical signals left by potential prey. Centipedes haven't changed much over the millennia. They would have stalked the forest floor around the feet of dinosaurs. They're equipped with fearsome weapons. Strong mandibles for tearing at flesh, claws to hold their victims still, and lethal venom. But the katydid also has sensitive antennae and knows the centipede is closing in. One jump and it escapes. But 
It's a leap to its death. The golden orb weaver's patience is rewarded. The Katie did struggles all it can, but it can't get free of the web. Or the spider's deadly fangs. Orb weaver venom is similar to that of the black widow spider of North America. It quickly paralyzes the katydid. Her meal is packaged and ready for consumption. Below, the centipede is still on the hunt. It's detected another katydid. This one doesn't sense the approaching threat. Moving at nearly two feet a second, the centipede's numerous legs give it the advantage of speed, and it quickly descends upon its mark. Now its legs are used to envelop the victim, holding it tightly as modified front legs, known as poison claws, inject lethal venom. Once subdued, the prey is ripped apart with serrated mandibles. Leaving little behind, disappears back into the gloom of the forest floor to digest its meal. While some of Australia's creepier inhabitants wage chemical warfare, other killers of the night use more primitive techniques. They simply tear flesh from bone. When hunting, carnivorous marsupials inflict grievous bodily harm. In the dense forests on the remote island of Tasmania, an attractive marsupial comes out just after dark. He's about three feet long and weighs over seven pounds. But don't be fooled by his innocuous looks. His dainty face hides powerful jaws armed with long, sharp teeth. He's a notorious hunter. a baby-faced killer. He hunts alone, prowling the forest floor for small or medium-sized mammals. Like Paddy Mallon, the smaller relative of the kangaroo. Tiger Quoll gorges on the soft tissue only. His jaws aren't strong enough to crunch through bone or tendon. He has to eat quickly. There are thieves in the shadows, ruffians ready to steal his prize. A Tasmanian devil, the larger cousin of the Quoll and a formidable rival. This one can smell the kill. To avoid a fight that he cannot hope to win, the quoll beats a hasty retreat. Luckily, he can do something that his ferocious cousin can't. Climb trees. Quite at home amongst the canopy, it doesn't take long for this adept hunter 
to find another meal. A nest of crested pigeons. Raiding the sleepy family, he snatches one of the babies in the ultimate nightmare. His sharp teeth shear through flesh and small bones, a grisly end for the young bird. While the quoll's appetite is satisfied, on the ground below, the night's carnage has only just begun. Tasmanian devils are the largest and fiercest of the marsupial carnivores alive today. This species used to roam all over the continent, but is now only found in Tasmania. They hunt at night, feeding on small mammals, birds and reptiles. But they'll occasionally take on prey much bigger than themselves. A solitary ambush predator, this male works alone. He spotted a mob of wallabies. With one of the most powerful mammalian bites on Earth, he can gnaw through every part of the carcass. Fur, flesh, tendons, even bone. A devil can devour 40% of its body weight in half an hour, leaving nothing to waste. But the scent of blood is thick in the air. A scent that other devils can smell from several miles away. The fresh kill attracts a motley crew. Tasmanian devils are one of the few solitary hunters known to feed communally. But this social gathering is not for the faint-hearted. It's everyone for themselves. Although this chaotic feeding frenzy appears to be lacking in table manners, there are rules. Long facial whiskers determine personal space. And when invisible lines are crossed, violent skirmishes break out. Older devils proudly wear the battle scars of conflicts won and lost. Devil dinner time is a decidedly brutish affair. While Tasmanian devils rely on powerful jaws to kill and dismember, other predatory strategies are more intricate. Weaving a tangled web the red-backed spider prefers to entrap a victim before draining the life from within. Fine silk lines, almost invisible in the forest gloom. They've been carefully placed so that the slightest touch sets off vibrations. And the assassin is waiting. A female redback spider. Tiny, her body is less than half an inch across. But deadly. Her red stripe 
is a warning badge. A single misstep sounds the alarm. The redback approaches her prey. Squirting a liquid silk to further entangle her victim. Struggling won't help. The strands just draw tighter and tighter. Now she bites. While a lethal cocktail of toxins incapacitates her prey, digestive enzymes have already started to break down her meal from within, turning it to liquid for the spider to suck up at its leisure. Potentially fatal to humans, the redback is considered one of the most dangerous spiders on Earth. Her offspring are no less ruthless. The female has laid her eggs in a sack. Once they hatch, the spiderlings are allowed to share their mother's web for a few days. But there are too many of them. There's only one way to fix that. These newborns are cannibals. They start to eat each other, as well as any unhatched eggs. Only the strongest will survive. In a few days, they'll disperse to build their own deadly traps. The red-backed spider clearly advertises its deadly nature with a bold red stripe. Sporting the same warning colours is another silent assassin. The red-bellied black snake wields chemical weapons of its own. Rivers and streams that nurture Australia's lush forests also harbour some rather nefarious characters. Slithering along a rocky creek bed is one of Australia's most notorious venomous snakes. This male red-bellied black snake is on the prowl. Equally at home in the water as he is on land, he rarely strays far from the watercourse to which he is so well adapted. With a predilection for aquatic species, he can track prey along the riverbank. and will even swim below the water's surface in pursuit of tadpoles and fish. And today, this silent assassin will need to ply all the tricks of his deadly trade. His keen eyesight and hearing have detected a moving target. a spotted marsh frog. This nimble amphibian is no easy meal. The fast-moving frog darts from one hiding hole to the next.
but it leaves behind a chemical trail, which is quickly detected by the red belly's probing tongue. The snake stealthily pursues his mark in a deadly game of cat and mouse. until there's nowhere left to hide. A deadly concoction of toxins and anticoagulants delivered by long, sharp fangs swiftly overwhelms the prey, which he devours whole paralysed, but still alive. Savouring his meal, this covert killer slinks back off into the shadows. Australian forests are full of peril. And it's not just the animals that are built to sting, maim and kill. Here, even the plant life is getting in on the action. While the noxious Gimpy Gimpy plant wields chemical weapons, carnivorous plants like the sinister sundew lure unsuspecting victims to their deaths. Home to a wealth of predators, these ancient forests can be dark and treacherous. But sometimes it's the forest itself that poses the greatest threat. Australian plants must be treated with a healthy respect. The Gimpy Gimpy stinging tree looks like an ordinary plant, but its leaves hold a deadly secret. It's one of the world's most toxic plants. Fine hairs on the leaves and stem contain potent venom. Passers-by can be envenomed by simply brushing against its foliage. Once lodged in the skin, these fine hairs release neurotoxins that cause excruciating and long-lasting pain. So brutal is the effect that it has been known to cause fatalities amongst dogs and even horses. These soft woody shrubs can grow up to 15 feet tall. Resident pariahs that are best avoided. But strangely, some creatures can withstand the toxic hairs and use the tree as shelter from predators. Mantis nestle amongst its leaves. Spiders string their webs from its stems. They don't seem at all bothered by the tree's venom. This caterpillar can even eat the leaves, oblivious to the horrific fate of other creatures that even touch the tree. It's the caterpillar of the Jezebel butterfly. It's managed to breach this tree's impenetrable defense against the plant eaters of the forest by evolving immunity to the toxins. For every deadly weapon evolved, there's always someone who can find a defense against it. One plant has developed a more proactive strategy. Rather than keeping animals away, it draws them close. This is the sundew. The clear droplets on the end of its tentacles catch the light, giving the plant a glittering beauty and its name. 
Yet these exquisite diamonds hold a sinister secret. They're designed to entrap the plant's food. Most plants get all the nutrients they need from the soil. But in areas of poor soil, they can't get enough crucial nitrogen. So they must look elsewhere. These clear droplets look and smell alluringly like sweet nectar, irresistible to insects. As the ant tries to feed on the rich nectar, it doesn't realise that this is a scam. There is no nectar, just a very, very sticky mucus from which there is no escape. Struggling only makes it worse. Exhaustion will bring about a drawn out death. To extract the valuable nutrients from its victim, the sundew excretes digestive enzymes. Slowly dissolving the ant so that the precious nitrogen can be absorbed through the leaves. Some of these plants can grow to over three feet high and live for 50 years or more, getting everything they need from the corpses of unfortunate prey. Australia's deadly plants come in all guises. The Gimpy Gimpy has fine hairs laced in venom. The sundew lures and ensnares, and adding fuel to the fire, Australia's most famous tree coats itself in poison. As diverse as Australia's forests are, they are dominated by one particular family of trees, the eucalypts. Also known as gum trees, these ubiquitous icons are killers in their own right. Eucalyptus leaves are covered in glands that produce oil, giving them a waxy texture. These oils are toxic, even to humans, and most of Australia's native animals leave them well alone. Except koalas. They're not just immune to the toxic leaves, they thrive on them. Although the eucalyptus leaves are low in protein and high in toxins, the koala's specially adapted stomach extracts all the nutrition it needs, which isn't much. To conserve what precious energy they do get, they just sleep sometimes for 22 hours a day. For koalas, the eucalypt is the giver of life. But these trees can also bring death. It's not the toxicity of the eucalyptus oil that is most dangerous. It's the oil itself. It burns. Bushfires frequently ravage Australian forests. Gum trees are known as gasoline trees. Their highly flammable oils fuel the inferno, burning at temperatures higher than 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the burning point of jet fuel. Firestorms incinerate the native animals that can't escape. What was once a refuge has become 
a crematorium. But while the flames consume the forest, the gum trees have evolved to depend on the blaze. The passing flames open their seed capsules. In the burnt, rich, ash-laden soil, the seeds establish themselves and grow quickly, affording them a strong competitive advantage over other plants. The forest that burns belongs to the eucalypts. A force of nature. Bushfires devour everything in their path. But in Australia's tropical north, there are other destructive forces at play. Tiny toxic terrors wreak havoc amongst the branches. For green tree ants, the forest canopy is a gangster's paradise. Green tree ants live in a rigid, structured society with one queen and up to half a million workers. Everyone works for the good of the colony. Even the larvae do their part, generating silk for the building work. They're also known as weaver ants. The colony constructs a multitude of nests throughout the canopy. These multi-chambered structures are built by the smaller, minor workers who weave them from leaves and larval silk. In an incredible display of teamwork, communicating by touch and pheromones, these workers even build body bridges and ladders to bridge gaps. All these workers need to be fed, so larger, major workers go out to hunt. Marauding gangs scour the forest canopy, and in such numbers, they can take on prey much larger than themselves. Cicadas, beetles, and other victims are quickly laid to waste. This deadly, organized gang pillages the surrounding area. Very little stands in their way. These major workers are also the soldiers, fierce sentinels, defenders of the colony. The presence of another ant species on their patch is not tolerated. Armed to the teeth, trapjaw ants are big, carnivorous ants with extraordinarily strong jaws. These formidable predators wield a bite force of over 300 times their own body weight. But this small troop of foraging trap jaws is no match for the green ant army. Encroaching on rival turf, they're outnumbered and outgunned. The green tree ants unleash an arsenal of chemical weapons. They pepper the trap jaws with formic acid fired from abdominal glands. The invaders are quickly overwhelmed. While green tree ants ravage the forest canopy, the forest floor below is no less of a battleground. Amidst the host of thieves and assassins, roams 
an ancient warrior, the Rainforest Scorpion. Over 400 million years ago, this primeval creature emerged from the oceans. A predator that still prowls the forests today. Australia's rainforest scorpion is a war machine. Protected by a tough exoskeleton armor, armed with huge, powerful pincers, and carrying a venomous sting on his tail. He can defend himself and he can hunt. His flattened shape allows him to squeeze into rock crevices or hide under logs from where he watches over his territory. When another male invades his turf, he's having none of it. He leaves his rival in no doubt that he's not welcome. He comes out at night to hunt under the light of the moon. An arachnid related to spiders, he has numerous pairs of eyes. And even in low light, he can detect light and dark shapes but he can also feel his way through the undergrowth. Fine sensory hairs detect the faintest movement in the air. And special organs called pectines on the underside of his body decipher textures and scents on the ground. He hunts spiders, centipedes, and crickets. He uses his formidable pincers to overcome smaller prey with brute strength. His venom is valuable and is reserved for larger prey or self-defense. The serrated inner edges of his pincers tear the victim into bite-sized chunks. While alien-like mouthparts secrete digestive enzymes to break down his meal. He secured his catch without the need to spill any precious venom. His chemical weapons cache remains full. He's locked and loaded. If he's attacked, he won't go quietly. While some forest assassins diligently conserve precious venom, others wield it with reckless abandon. Lethal toxins literally drip from the fangs of Australia's largest spider, instilling fear in the hearts of all who live here. The Australian Tarantula. Deep within Australia's steamy highland rainforests, hidden terrors lie in wait. A few days of torrential downpour have disturbed the forest floor. And from dark places, dark things emerge. The tarantula or bird-eating spider is Australia's largest spider. It can grow to the size of a man's hand. Measuring nearly half an inch long, its fangs are longer than those of a brown snake, delivering venom that's lethal to frogs, toads and small mammals. Foraging amongst the leaf litter, a brown bandicoot wanders perilously close to the spider's lair. And 
has caught its attention. But the bandicoot has little to fear. It's immune to the spider's deadly bite. A predator itself, the bandicoot now eyes the spider with hungry eyes. In response, the tarantula issues a warning. Its impressive threat display is enough to ward off the predator. With the threat gone, the spider retreats into its lair. Tarantula burrows can extend three feet below the surface. Radiating out from the entrance is an intricate network of strong and durable strands. Trip lines that alert the spider to the presence of passing prey. The tarantula waits patiently for impromptu dinner guests to announce their arrival. Unaware that they are on the menu. A single misstep seals the bush cricket's fate. The hulking spider drags its victim back into its lair so that the feast may begin. Life in the undergrowth is perilous. To survive here, forest inhabitants have developed a raft of unscrupulous predatory strategies. While invertebrates wage chemical warfare and carnivorous marsupials tear flesh from bone, even the trees sting and burn. So, the next time you enter an Australian forest, remember, you should tread carefully. Because lurking within every shadow and behind every tree are a host of deadly Australians.